Eurifa can bring you in as someone who is in charge of a huge company, as I said, and, and, and uh, an important company for the well-being of, of, of a whole country, of a whole population. How did you react end of February when, when all this started and when the war came to your country? Um, first of all, I would like to thank people of uh, Davos, uh, people of Switzerland, for hosting this forum in this beautiful city and in your beautiful country. Uh, this forum um, makes, I would even say, um, CEOs, business leaders of the world to be much more socially responsible, uh, to recognize and to act, to make uh, uh, life on, on this planet, again, uh, life of everybody uh, better, so to recognize their responsibility uh, for the world. Um, and in moments like, for example, we had uh, on the 24th, uh, of course, uh, we feel this responsibility. So when, when the first uh, uh, missiles uh, started uh, hitting Ukraine and killing Ukrainian people, um, you were, for example, I am, as, as the head of this company, I understand that I'm responsible for my employees, again. I needed to evacuate some people from, uh, from Kiev, uh, from other cities that were immediately uh, um, damaged and uh, impacted by this missile hit. Then uh, you realize that, for example, in terms of our company, or in case of our company, we're responsible for basically all Ukrainians, because we provide heating uh, for 90% of Ukrainians. Um, they can, it was 24th of February, it was really cold. You understand that people can die, not just because of Russian missiles and shelling, but also because they will just be left without heating, without natural gas, without electricity. And then you understand that, for example, uh, we're not that big in electricity, but when Russia started uh, heating our civilian infrastructure, and the power stations could not get coal, but they could, not, but they could still get uh, gas. Again, we were supplying gas just to keep the lights uh, on uh, in Ukraine. Then you realize that, again, we, as the biggest company in Ukraine, we provide something like 25% of the state budget. Okay. You understand that uh, the state needs money, people needs, uh, they, they need uh, support, again, humanitarian assistance. You feel all the responsibility. So, for example, when we had this battle for Kyiv, uh, first two weeks, uh, yep. where inside Kyiv, and it's difficult to imagine. So, for example, again, I thought that we would never have such a war in Europe. And Kyiv is a beautiful European city. And you have tanks, you have, again, all these atrocities inside the European capitals, nowadays. And you still have to run the company. You still need to make sure that everything, again, works uninterrupted. Then you, by the way, realize that uh, it's not just the Ukrainians that depend on gas uh, that, for example, goes through Ukraine. It's also Europeans. Even Switzerland, by the way, gets natural gas that goes through Ukraine. And then you even have a very difficult moral dilemma. Because on one hand, Russians are killing us. At the same time, again, European leaders are saying, look, please don't interrupt Russian transit of gas to Europe because it may have some undesired uh, consequences for Europeans. Again, for Switzerland as well. So Russian gas was going through Ukraine to Switzerland during the war, and we had to make sure that it's uninterrupted. All these days, we provided uninterrupted transit of gas to Switzerland as well. So, of course, then you cannot sleep again. It's, so this, in, in moments like this, you understand that... Uh, when you are a business leader, you in fact may have even more responsibility because many people depend on you. And if you were, again, I see many people, uh, young people in this audience. So you are, you are studying a lot. You are preparing yourself for something, for the moments like this, when all that you have studied, all that you can do basically, you have to uh, implement to help your people. First of all, I would say that uh, Ukraine is a European country. We are as European as, as Switzerland. Uh, and it's important to understand that Ukraine is just unfortunate to be on the front line uh, of this uh, common battle of a free world, of a civilized world, against the uh, barbarians. Again, barbarians that uh, uh, committed all these terrible crimes to Nadia and uh, um, her family. 
barbarians who raped, uh, again, eight-year-old uh, girl in, in Bucha in, in Kiev or near Kiev uh, just weeks ago. So that is why, uh, first of all, we need to realize that we, we don't do enough. So if it happens, if it continues to, to happen, we need to do more. Um, what can we do? Um, again, it, it to some extent depends on, 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 on politics. Uh, I understand that Switzerland, for example, is a neutral country. Uh, but I heard the, the uh, speech of the, of the Swiss president uh, at the forum. And uh, I also, again, know the position of the Swiss people that uh, do not let politicians confuse neutrality uh, with uh, some uh, indifference or in some cases complicity with crimes. So you can't be neutral but you cannot be complicit or you cannot be indifferent of, of crimes. That, that's very, very uh, obvious because then there would be no justice and people who commit these terrible crimes, they would feel that they can always go to countries that uh, are indifferent, you see, and uh, would go again uh, without any accountability. Second, I would say that um, and uh, in Davos, in the World Economic Forum, for many years, uh, this topic of uh, environmental sustainability uh, is one of the most important topics. And again, with many young people in this room, I understand that uh, maybe all of, all of you, you are very um, environmentally cautious. You want to live, I mean, maybe I'm not that young, but uh, I still consider myself young. So, I, and I want my kids, I have three kids, so I want them uh, to live uh, on a planet without any uh, cataclysms in, in a good climate. Uh, and I want, again, them to ski, and I want my grandparents to be able to ski in Switzerland, uh, and that you still have snow. You see, so that's why, again, w w we are all fighting this climate change. But uh, this situation with Ukraine, and to some extent the situation in, in, in the Middle East as well, uh, reminds us that we also have to care about geopolitical sustainability of energy and our consumption. Uh, something that was neglected. So when you consume energy that comes from uh, countries with rogue regimes, like Russia for example, and some, there are some other countries in the world with rogue regimes, that's not a responsible consumption. So again, in general we have to consume energy responsibly because it hurts our climate. But we should be also mindful of geopolitical consequences of when you're paying billions of dollars to regimes like Putin that then kill innocent people. Again, for example, just, I mean, maybe I'm too pragmatic, I'm a businessman, nobody's perfect, uh, but um, for example, uh, Putin regime is still getting from Europe every day one billion dollars for Russia exports of oil and gas. So the European Union, for example, provided in assistance to Ukraine one billion dollars in March, although they paid to Putin 30 billion dollars, again, to finance his war. Um, of course, again, it should stop. So that's why this responsibility of, uh, of people to consume responsibly, to put some pressure on politicians, to be mindful of the environment, to be mindful of geopolitical consequences. So that politicians do something when they pay this huge amounts of money, maybe even taxpayers' money, to, to Putin and to uh, terrible people like Putin who are then committing these crimes. I mean, uh, again, of course, uh, it's protecting your, um, your home, your, your motherland. Uh, that's very important just because, again, as Nadia mentioned, uh, uh, it's one of the may of the biggest injustices when you have to flee your home. So that is why our brave soldiers right now are defending Ukraine. So uh, that's why many of thousands of employees from our company went to defend uh, Ukraine. Uh, at the same time, uh, those who are still uh, not in the army, but who are still, for example, providing critical supplies, critical utilities to Ukrainians, then they go under bullets I'm not exaggerating, so 21st of, uh, 21 of our employees were killed on the job. But they still go under bullets, again, to repair some gas pipes. Uh, for example, like a practical story, a city of Kherson. There is a, a, a centralized heating plant over there. So Russian occupy, occupation forces came to the city, uh, killed two of the employees uh, inside the, the, the plant. 
the rest, uh, they just locks the doors, locks the doors. They stay there for a week. But they were providing utilities to their own uh, town because they were afraid that, again, they, their people, their families would just freeze. Um, it's also important so that people don't flee Ukraine and they want to return to make sure that uh, Ukraine can still survive even as an economy. That's why, for example, we're still providing all the utilities to, to, to Ukrainians. So there's still electricity, again, heating, gas, um, everything in Ukraine. It's very difficult uh, when Russian missiles are hitting our infrastructure every day. Uh, we have shortages here, there and everywhere, but we're still, again, in this very important job to provide these critical utilities to Ukrainians. And that's where the international community can also be next to us, uh, so that we together, we can, while we still can, uh, to make sure that Ukrainians are more or less, again, okay uh, in, in Ukraine, so that they don't need to flee. Because when you have to flee, it's already very bad. So if now we can keep Ukrainians in Ukraine, we can provide some basic utilities to them. We can make sure that, for example, Ukraine can export uh, food, grains, again, to help people in Africa. Ukraine is one of the biggest exporters of food in the world. We cannot, we grow, uh, again, agriculture products, we cannot export them. It's a problem for Ukraine, it's also the problem for people in Africa. They will starve soon. So it will cause some uh, huge and terrible consequences around the world. So that's why, until it's too late, uh, together we need to do a lot uh, to make sure that, uh, again, humanity wins in Ukraine, because it's just the front line. I would just like to add, uh, there was a country, um, many years ago, uh, that was uh, surrounded by um, empires with clear imperialistic ambitions. Uh, and, by the way, it was not even a country. There were different, more or less countries. Again, people with different languages, with maybe different views, uh, slightly different landscape. Uh, some had more mountains, some had less mountains. And then they decided to unite, because they understood that the only way for them to defend their common values was to have a unity and also a defense alliance. They were one of the uh, probably first democracies uh, in Europe, by the way, um, especially not a monarchy. Uh, they were one of the best fighters in Europe. Um, and they decided that together they can defend their values. So it was a unity, an alliance, and a defense alliance. That country is called Switzerland. Because it's a, basically a confederation of cantons. So it's not basically that uh, it was just created by God like this. It's like people from different cantons, in order to defend their values, their democratic values, they united. That is why the only solution for peace in Ukraine is for Ukraine to be a part of this kind of defense alliance. Call it NATO, call it somehow I mean, with a different kind of definition or whatever. But it should be an alliance that can defend the values. We have these values. You have these values. You have these values. But sometimes values, they have to be defended. Because there will be people, like again, in Switzerland uh, 500 years ago, or again, in Ukraine now, that want to kill people with these values. Because their values is a challenge for their power. Because people with democratic values is a challenge for their authoritarian regimes. They will be killing people with these values. So people with these values have to be able to defend themselves.